I just found this hat in my apartment. Should we? No. <laughs> my head's too big. That's so embarrassing. So you've been studying a language for a while, maybe even multiple languages, but you can't seem to keep things interesting. It's not your fault, man, and it's also not uncommon, you know? I think that we, as language learners, sometimes we get so caught up in the concept of making progress that we forget sometimes that fun is a part of the progress. So today, to help you keep from getting bored in your language learning routine, I'm gonna share with you 18 ways or 18 things that I do in my language learning process to keep things interesting and fun for me, okay? Can we stress that part? Because not everything I find fun, everybody else is gonna find fun. Sometimes I feel like I'm a grandma, but that's okay, you know? Different strokes for different folks. Guy like in, right? Okay, vamos. Number one, did you know that doing crossword puzzles offsets the development of Alzheimer's and dementia? And do you know what else prevents Alzheimer's and dementia? learning languages. Okay, so can you imagine the combined brain power of doing a crossword puzzle in another language? You live forever. And these could be physical puzzles in books or it could be on your devices, but these, I bought these in Turkey while I was there a month ago. And it's so nice. These are actually for Turks that are trying to learn English, but the hints are in Turkish. So I learn a ton of new words while I do these. And there's also digital crossword puzzles like Wordle, which is still really popular, or Wordscapes. And I love Wordscapes so much because when I switch my phone language, it automatically switches too. I don't know. No, that's fun for me, okay? Number two, listen to music in another language, but in an active way, not a passive way. Pick apart the songs that you love in another language and use those songs to really study the language. You know, I have a full method and tutorial about how I do this. I made the video maybe like a year ago, so I will recommend you to go watch that once you're done here. So basically what I do is I write down all the lyrics, I look for structures that I don't know, I review structures that I do know, annotate the hell out of it, just try to like learn the song backwards and forwards so that I can sing it more confidently and like add it to my mental library of songs that I know in that language. There is one thing that I would add to the method that I described in the video though, and that is lyrics training. There's this website called lyrics training where you can basically look up any song in the language. It'll pull it up on YouTube and it kind of like pulls up the lyrics karaoke style and prompts you to fill in the missing words. So it's actually, it's a cool way to check your understanding of the song after you've studied it. Number three, if you're getting bored with your target language, why don't you just try out a different flavor, okay? Depending on the language that you're learning, there might be two regional dialects, there might be three, there might even be 21, okay? I was kind of just learning like a general European Spanish for like five years, then I got really good at Spanish and I didn't know where to go from there, but then I went to Mexico for the first time when I was 19 and everything changed. I became obsessed with Mexican Spanish, the culture there, the history, everything, you know, but through the language. It's a topic that I'm very passionate about. As you can see, I made a whole video on it like two years ago. If you want to go watch that, I'll link it up here. But we don't have time to get into all that. So let's talk about ways to approach learning a dialect. So watching or reading the news from a particular country or particular region, it could also be, you know, following social media pages that are devoted to that specific dialect. Taking lessons on italki, specifically with people from that country, you know, there's a lot of different ways you could apply this depending on the language and how many resources and what kind of resources are available. So really just take it at your discretion. Do a lot of research. Look on Reddit. You never know Reddit. There's always something on Reddit, you know? Number four, my friends, is to join online language learning communities. And this could be on Twitter. It could be on Instagram. It could be on, literally on Facebook, you know, if you're into Facebook. I have an ancient video that I made about this like I think three years ago, but my entire life changed when I realized that there was a ton of people on the internet that were just as deeply interested in learning languages as I was. So like on Instagram, by exploring hashtags like language learning, learn German, language community, and things like that, I found so many friends just by following and like, you know, chatting with people in the comments and you know, looking out for making those relationships. Oh, also Langtwit. I joined Langtwit years and years ago. It's basically just like a hashtag, like an online community where people, you know, interact about languages, post stuff about their learning processes, make friends and contacts. I met my friend Aleh in Mexico City a couple weeks ago for the first time in person. We met on Twitter first, dude. It's crazy because it's, you know, real people real connections, but a lot of the time it just starts online. Which, while we're talking about being social, brings us to number five, which is doing in-person or online language exchanges. Learn a language by exchanging or talking with somebody who wants to learn your native language or a language that you already know. First of all, the chances are that if you live in a big city, there is some type of organization or some type of group that does in-person language exchanges. So like, I don't know, when I was in Istanbul, there was a, there's an organization called Yabanji that organizes, you know, in-person language meetups. Every 
every single week. So I don't know what city you live in, do your research, but a lot of times in big cities, there's, you know, people that are interested in learning and speaking multiple languages. So there might be a community out there that you haven't even discovered yet. But even if you don't live in a big city and nothing like that is readily available to you, there's always exchange apps, you know, like HelloTalk or Tandem. Even though Tandem has gotten kind of ghetto in the past couple years. Or, I mean, you don't even need exchange apps also. Like, if you use social media like I just recommended, you're probably going to find people in the language community that want to exchange with you. So next, the sixth thing that I do to keep my language learning interesting is to learn how to do stuff that I like in another language. This might be a bit advanced, but basically like whatever interests or whatever hobbies you have in your native language, just seek them out in your target language. So I love to do yoga and exercise, for example. So every once in a while, instead of looking up like a yoga flow or an exercise tutorial in English on YouTube, I'll look it up in Spanish or German or French or whatever, just to keep it a bit more linguistically engaging for me. You know, trying to apply my languages in a natural way into my everyday life you know, with things that I was already gonna do anyways. But before we go any further, I wanna talk about a platform that I've been using to apply this for a while, which is Skillshare. I'm pretty sure a lot of people already know what Skillshare is. It's pretty much like a household name at this point. But in the case that you're not familiar with Skillshare, it's basically an online learning community with thousands and thousands of classes available in tons of languages. You know, you can learn to knit, you can learn to dance, you can learn to use Adobe Illustrator, pretty much like any hobby or any interest that you can imagine it's on Skillshare. English is probably like the principal kind of king language on Skillshare, but if I'm looking for a class or a tutorial for that thing in a different language, I'll just put the keywords in that language. So like instead of yoga for beginners in English, I would look up yoga para principiantes in Spanish or yoga for anfänger in German. But anyways, I have something to show you guys. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do a close up or anything, but my most recent class that I finished on Skillshare was a journaling class, but it was in Spanish. So this girl from Spain uploaded the class and it's just really powerful. It was, it was a powerful experience to learn how to talk about myself, my life, my feelings, but you know, do all of that in another language, it's like, it just, it tickles my brain, okay? <laughs> you can see I'm still like using this as a learning experience because there's words that I've highlighted where I've had to like look something up or things like that. And I have great news for you. So starting today, if you click the link in the description down below, you will get free access to Skillshare's entire library of classes for an entire month. That's 30 days, which I feel like that's so generous. I feel like a lot of time when we get free trials for stuff, it's usually only like a week, but you know, this time you got time to browse, baby. You got time to get to know the platform form time to take as many classes as you want in as many languages as you can find. If you need even more reason to try out Skillshare, how about, ooh, try out Skillshare before Elon Musk buys it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, he's not gonna buy it, he's not gonna buy it. I'm not jinxing that. Okay, moving on. Okay, something that I never expected to love so much in another language was reading kids' books, especially when they have pictures. Oh my God, I love when they have pictures. I feel like reading books in another language is so intimidating in general, because you're like, oh, what if I don't follow the story? I have to look up words every five seconds just to make sure that I'm understanding but like the experience of reading a child's book is just so different because I mean most of the words are very basic and there's also you know pictures like I said so if you're not following the story a lot of times the the pictures actually can cushion your understanding so you don't have to look up words every five seconds so like I have this Peter Rabbit book that my sister got me for my graduation it's actually a coloring book so I have some work to do but it's a pretty it's a it's a chill read and when I was in Turkey I bought James and the Giant Peach in Turkish so it's called Dev Shiftali which just means like big peach it's kind of a good way to get comfortable reading in the language in general but you also get to feel like a kid again so 10 out of 10 experience read children's books okay my next tip to have fun learning a language is to learn it backwards and what do i mean by that well it just means learning the language through resources that are not meant for you but rather people learning your native language do you see what i'm saying so i remember when i first started learning portuguese i had to get creative with my learning so i started listening to a podcast that was meant for brazilians who wanted to learn english so honestly i mean i, I learned a ton of portuguese but i also just learned a ton of stuff about my language which we love self-awareness, okay? But the material could be anything, you know? It could be a book. So I also, I bought these books while I was in Turkey and they're for Turks that are learning English, but you know, it's cool because I get to learn Turkish backwards, right? <laughs> okay, next up is laddering, okay? And even if you've never heard of this method, where's my buddies? So laddering is when you use one language that you've learned to learn another language. So when I first started learning Turkish in April, I really, really wanted to learn through German. So I bought this textbook Turkish Fanfinger, which is meant for people that are native speakers of German, but it's just so cool. And I still use this book all the time, even though I'm not consistently laddering German now. And it's just such a cool experience to, you know, use something that you've learned as a tool to learn something else. So next, do you like playing video games? Not even, okay, not even video games, just 
games in general. That's a great opportunity for you to practice your languages, dude. Even if you don't have like a physical console to play video games with, there's a ton of online games that are available in different languages. Like my favorite is Scribble or Scriblio, I'm not sure how to say it, but it's basically this online game where you draw something and people have to guess it as soon as they can, as soon as they like figure out what you're drawing. But it could also be a physical console. So like I switch like my Nintendo Switch into different languages all the time. So I'm playing Animal Crossing like in German or in French or whatever it is. And it's just so fun because it's like, you know, I was gonna do this anyway. I was gonna waste my time playing video games anyway, but now I can do it in another language. So it's not like a complete waste, you know? Next, do you know how to cook? You don't. Okay, well that's no problem. It is never too late to learn how to cook and it's never too late to learn how to cook in a different language. So something I love to do is follow recipes in other languages. If you've never done it, it's just such a fun experience because like you're learning a ton of food words, you're learning how to give commands in the language because recipes are often written in like a command format and you get a meal out of it. You know, this can be such a fun experience because you can also invite over like your family and friends to enjoy it with you. And it's just like a really fun, natural way to incorporate languages into your everyday life. Now, next, I'm gonna give you a recommendation that you can completely ignore if you want to, okay? It does not float some people's Boats, but it floats mine okay reality tv bro we are at a technological age where we have more access to on-demand like video content than ever before and the best part of that in my opinion is reality tv i would say reality tv is probably one of my favorite things to watch in other languages just because it's so real like you know that's how people talk they argue you know they talk about their feelings they use a ton of slang and it's just like you cannot get more native than reality TV. Like that's what you need to be hearing if you want to learn to sound natural in a language, if you want to get exposed to a lot of different accents in a language. But next, if you don't like reality TV, something else you can watch is just vlogs, uh, you know, lifestyle content and things like that where people are just, I guess, narrating their everyday life. That's pretty much the same thing as reality TV. It's just, I guess, more personal and not so sensationalized if you don't like reality TV for that reason. Watching vlogs is also a great way to get to know, like, I guess the culture or I guess the infrastructure of the country that these people live in because, you know, if they're narrating like their everyday life, they're gonna be on public transport, they're gonna be, you know, going to ATMs, paying for stuff. And it's kind of just like a way to get to visit the country vicariously. So yeah, I don't know. I feel like reality TV and vlogs are kind of in the same bucket for me, but they're two separate things. So choose whatever floats your boat. So my friends, the next thing I'm going to recommend to you is that you get personal and keep a diary in your target language. I already mentioned earlier that I've been doing like a journaling class on Skillshare in Spanish, but you can do this. You can journal even if you don't like properly know how to journal, you know? And it also doesn't have to be like a super deep thing every day. It could just be like a report of how your day went, you know, who you saw, what you ate, one thing that made you happy today and things like that, just to kind of learn to express yourself and talk about personal things, but in another language. And if you don't know where to start, there's an account that I really love to follow, which is Joe Club. It's by Joe Franco. I don't know if you guys remember her from, or I don't know if you follow her now or from the Damon and Joe days, but she is such a wonderful woman. I got the chance personally to meet her and hang out with her at the Polyglot Conference a couple weeks ago in Cholula. Oh, and it was so cool. She she gave a talk where she talked about the power of journaling in other languages. And she it was like an interactive thing. She made all of us write about very personal stuff, but like in other languages. And you know, that's what kind of inspired me to get back into journaling in another language. So just try it out. It doesn't have to be physical writing. It could also just be typing like on a digital log. It could be video journaling, just where you talk, which is really beneficial for your speaking. You might find out a lot more about yourself than you thought and in another language. Okay, so this next one is a travel tip. I know that this isn't doable for everyone, obviously, if you don't travel, but I just wanted to mention it anyways, because I find it so, so important. Doing homestays. Okay. Staying with a family when you travel instead of staying in like a hotel or an Airbnb is so beneficial because you get to constantly, you know, practice your target language with them, especially if they don't speak your native language or don't speak English. I was recently in Oaxaca, Mexico just for a couple days and I stayed with a family that I got to know through like a mutual contact. And you know, we did like a day trip together. We had every meal together. I played with their dog. We played games together. We watched Coco together in Spanish. So that family I found through a mutual contact, but most times when I'm looking for homes says I'll use world packers which I think I still have a code with them if you use a lease it should get you ten dollars off the yearly subscription but world packers is a website where people will host you for free if you do something for them so it's kind of like a, a work exchange so if you're looking for homestays most times the deal is like teach our kids English or you know teach our kids your native language or teach our kids how to paint or something like that 
So, you know, you can get free lodging with a family just for, you know, providing some type of service for them. Usually, usually language related. And usually you'll get to practice your language skills with them too. So it's really like everybody wins, okay? It's really, really fun. And I would recommend it to anybody any day over hotels or Airbnbs. Now for the next tip, I'm really not sure how obvious this one is. I was kind of on the fence of like whether to include this or not. Where are my bunnies? I was on the fence because I didn't want to be like, oh, watch TV and movies in your target language. But I guess this is a bit more specific. So watching dubbed cartoons. I don't know, it's kind of like the same thing for me as reading children's books. I love watching dubbed cartoons. It's just so funny because like, I feel like that's the stuff we never really get to experience learning languages as adults because like we don't watch cartoons that often, right? Or like we watch cartoons when we're a kid, but it can also be really, really fun when you're an adult because especially if you're a beginner, that's the kind of stuff that you're gonna understand. Like sure, you can watch your favorite movies and TV shows in your native language, but just like with subtitles in another, but it's just such a different, like so much better experience when you watch it dubbed just in the language. I think the funniest part about watching cartoons in another language is seeing how the character names change. Like the first time that I watched SpongeBob, what was Esponja in Spanish, I was so shook when I found out that Squidward's name is Calamardo, which is like, it's like a mix of squid, calamar, and Eduardo. <laughs> I don't know why that tickled my brain so much, it's so funny. Uh, Patrick is Patricio, and you know, that's just kind of, that's the stuff that you don't get when you watch something just with subtitles, like you gotta watch it dubbed. Okay, this penultimate tip is kind of old school, I'm not gonna lie, but if you like old school, you'll like this one. Having a pen pal. Have you ever had a pen pal? Is this two 2000s? I don't know if I'm like dating myself by talking about pen pals, but I feel like we gotta bring it back, you know? Pen pals, that was an era. You know, it could be snail mail, like physical letters if you're into that, if you're into the whole process of receiving letters, but it could also just be like a digital exchange, like on WhatsApp or, you know, Kakao Talk, whatever. I remember as soon as I started learning Portuguese in 2018, I immediately went to enterpals.com, which I still recommend to people all the time. It's such a good website to like find people to talk to in different languages. But literally the first person I messaged on there, my friend Fernando, he ended up being like such a good pen pal such a good friend in general and I really really lucked out. So we've written letters to each other in both of our languages but I feel like most of our interaction has been through like WhatsApp and video calls and things like that but you know it's just cool to like find a person you can do that with. But if you're someone that loves to write, loves cute stationery, loves receiving letters, you should you know consider finding somebody who's into the whole snail mail thing. It can be kind of scary giving your address to a complete stranger on the internet but just you know try to do try to use your common sense, use as much tools as you can to do all the research on the person before you give them your address. And yeah, please be safe, but also be trusting to a certain extent. Okay, this is my last tip to you, my friends. I would say that I am kind of like, I'm the master <laughs> of this last tip, or at least I really, really enjoy it. Recording yourself. Dude, I'm always recommending people, like telling people, record yourself, record yourself, record yourself. It's just so nice to record yourself, sit in front of a camera and talk about nothing, talk about a specific topic, talk about your day for three to five minutes, especially over time. So, you know, for like 30 days or maybe even a couple of months at a time, it's just such a good experience to record yourself because you can get so much more comfortable learning to speak when you're by yourself. And you can also check your progress over time. So, you know, if you're if you've been recording yourself for two months straight and then you watch a video of yourself on the first day it's gonna be like and all of the pressure of you know speaking the language it kind of just disappears when you're talking to yourself because there's you know you don't have to worry if you're gonna understand the other person because you're the only person you don't have to worry about like responding quickly because you're literally just talking to yourself nothing bad can happen, okay? So we have made it through my friends. Those are my 18 things that I do, 18 methods to keep my language learning effective and fun, but mostly fun. You don't have to employ every single one of these methods into your routine. I honestly would advise against that so that you don't get too overwhelmed, but just take the ones that are speaking to you the most. And then if you need more inspiration down the way, just come on back to this video. I will still be here. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It really does encourage me to see that you guys are responding to the videos that I put out. So if this video helped you, let me know down in the comments what you're taking away. I'm always posting little tips and tricks like this on my other social channels. So if you want to follow me on Instagram or Twitter, it's just Elise De Vega on everything. That's E L Y S S E D A V E G A. Yeah. See you next time. Thanks for watching this video. Take care. Bye.